Welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina, and in this tutorial, I want to transform this old dresser using some chalk paint and decorative finishes. I'm going to talk you through all the supplies and products I use. I prepped this piece well for this tutorial, and I've put in the wood fillers, cleaned it really well inside and out, and I'm going to take you through some really helpful hints on what I do with my furniture. I am also going to be adding the Iron Orchid Designs Prim and Trim Decor Transfer into this style design that we're doing today. For my base coat, I'm going to use the Annie Salone Chalk Paint in French Linen and En Fleur, just a one to one ratio mix. And you really don't need a lot of paint, so just make what you think you need and you can always add a little bit more. For my base coat, I really just want to get the color on there, so I'm not using any particular brush stroke. I'm really just trying to get the color filled in there. I'm very meticulous about making sure that I apply it slightly on the thinner side because I am going to go ahead and add a second coat, and you really want to brush the edges. You don't want that paint to be clumping up at the edges, and it's really, really helpful when you are letting your pieces dry, even in between the coats, to always pull out your drawers. Because I sanded this piece, the wood is pretty raw, so it's going to soak up the paint pretty quickly. You don't have to sand a piece when you're applying chalk paint. You can apply it directly over finishes. It's pretty thick. It's very durable. I just wanted to redo this dresser, so I chose to sand it, but that's a total option. Also, because I sell my furniture pieces, I actually like to take the drawers right out and paint the inside frames. And using these handheld flat chippy palm brushes is absolutely perfect. So you can get a nice, nice, even touch with your paint along these frames, especially when they're thin, as well as around the uh, frame of your drawers as well. Again, there's no particular brush stroke needed, but I am doing random brush strokes because as I get into the second coat, I do want to create uh, a little level of texture with the chalk paint. While I wait for that base to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Minwax Gel Stain in Aged Oak. It's my favorite gel stain. I can literally put this on and it just looks absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, this particular tabletop has definitely seen its days. And I have quite a bit of wood filler on there and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be able to mask that with this gel stain. So I'm using a disposable um, sponge applicator and I'm generally just go in a horizontal direction, just back and forth and really just get all of that uh, really thick gel stain into the wood. I like to be very particular and get right underneath the lip of the tabletop and make sure all the sides and it has that continuity and it just looks so much more nicer and professional. The gel stain versus regular wood stain is really thick. It's almost like a jelly. So you only need to take a little bit at a time and really just wipe it out onto your surface. Because of the condition of this wood, I'm definitely going to be putting two coats of this exact same gel on here. Again, because I sell my pieces of furniture, I like to actually do the back as well. I think it just looks so much nicer and professional. So I'll use a sanding block and I like to moisten it. So then I go around, I sand it, make sure there's nothing that could be of a splinter, make sure the surface is really smooth. But as you can see, sometimes the back of these old Warren heirlooms can be pretty worn down. And again, professionally, I think it just looks so much nicer if you can clean them, you can use a stain, you can use an all-in-one paint. It just looks much nicer um, for your clients who are buying these pieces. Everything inside and out is tip top, cleaned up and just feels much more smooth and professional. It shows the level of quality of work you like to uh, provide for your pieces. It literally only takes a few minutes to brush some stain or add a, you know, a darker tone paint color and it really shows a true craftsmanship. 
I also like to wrap the original paint base color around the frame a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to tidy it all and make it look very, very professional. And once I've applied my second coat, I'm gonna go ahead and put a spray Varathane on there just for added protection. Totally up to you, but I really enjoy to cater to the inside of the drawers. I either stain them or I will put an all-in-one finish a paint. I've used the Fusion Mineral paint for this project in the Dusk Mask. And I really enjoy doing that so people can actually clean the inside of the drawers. And again, I sell my pieces, but this is optional. You don't have to. It's up to the piece and the piece condition. So as you can see, you can still see that um, wood filler that I had to apply in order to finish and complete the top. So with this second application, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, liberal with it and I'm going to mask that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a second finish of the exact same Minwaxed Aged Oak and once I've completed all of that, I'm going to show you exactly how beautiful the coverage is. I think if there's some way to preserve a little bit of the wood on an old kind of broken down piece like this, it just looks so classy and I think it's just a beautiful look. So as I say, I'm going to go ahead and get a nice thick coat of that gel stain on and it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. In general, with one coat, this gel stain dries fairly quickly. So I've already gone ahead with that base coat and put a second coat on and let it dry so we can go on to our next step. We are going to make a custom glaze using the Annie Salone paint in Country Gray. You can use any water-based clear glaze. I'm also going to make one in the primer red color. I kept the original base color brushes because there's loads of paint on there. I kept them in a Ziploc bag and I'm also going to be needing that for an upcoming step and I'm going to show you why. For this custom glaze color, I've made a mix of one part paint, one part clear glaze, one part water. And it's really important to keep stirring them as you're using them. Just going to need some moist shop towels or you can use a cotton rag that's moist. So very similar to a color wash, but using the glaze, the glaze is actually going to enhance the paint a little bit more. And I much prefer working with glaze because it's less drippy, it's less messy, and I feel like I actually have more control with it. So if I don't like something and I wipe it back with that clear glaze in there, I'm good to go. I absolutely adore working with the clear glaze and you can make any custom color. So any of the techniques that I'm showing you in this tutorial, you can pick any color uh, design that you like and apply the exact same techniques with. And you can use any chalk paint product you want with just the clear glaze to make your own custom clear glaze. If you have a very wood detailed piece of furniture and it's got all those grooves and all that fancy craftsmanship to it, you can literally put a custom clear glaze or any glaze of your choice and wipe it back. But with pieces such as the one I'm working on where it's just a little bit more flat, it's more boxy, I prefer to kind of use this ragging technique because I find I'm creating a little bit more of that dimension and more texture and it just, it creates a little bit more life to the piece and it kind of makes every, all the dimensions and especially as we get on to the next steps, you can see all these colors and shading and tones coming to life versus just wiping it back. But again, if you have a piece that has a lot of woodwork and grooves and details, you can literally do this and just wipe it back with your moist rag. The more you move your rag around, the more textures you're going to make. So have some fun with this play. So this is just our base coat and I want to make sure this is completely dry before we get into our next step, which is the IOD transfers. So I'm going to cut those into strips and I'm going to go ahead and apply those. Pretty easy, really easy actually. 
Once you've picked out the design of your transfer or how you'd like to place it on your piece, they've uh, provided you with an applicator. So you're just gonna use this little plastic applicator. I do recommend going from one side to the other. Try not to start from the middle of a transfer. Go from one side to the other, and that's gonna remove any air pockets. As you're rubbing that transfer, you're going to see that paper that it's applied with literally start to become a little bit translucent. So you're actually gonna see the transfer coming off. Once I've applied the transfers to all the drawers and the design that I have set up in my mind, what I'd like to do next is actually do some color shading and I'm going to be going through a few layers um, and I'm going to walk you through what I'm going to be doing to make the transfer and the colors I've chose work together and have a little continuity together. Always save the transfer bits that you haven't used or if you have made some cuts because I recently just did a uh, dresser tutorial and the amount of transfer I still had remainder worked perfectly for this dresser size. So definitely always save your transfer bits. So once I've completed all of my transfers, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started onto our next step. And we're just basically going to be layering up very similar to what we were doing, but I want to implement the actual transfers and have all of that color tone work together. So remember I told you to save our base color that we started with, with the French linen on fleur mix, uh, chalk paint mix that I had made. I take the brush that I started with. It's got loads of paint on there. And all I'm going to do, kind of like a dry brushing, even knowing the paint is a bit moist, and I'm just going to go in very random, random areas from the piece to the transfer to create the piece to kind of come together as if it was painted on together. I have enough paint on these brushes and I can add a little bit of water if I just need to get it moving a little bit for this entire dresser. I do not need to make any more custom paint. So using the Country Gray custom glaze mix that I had, my original uh, moist towels, what I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to actually just paint the glaze onto my moist rag. And this is going to allow even more control as I lightly just want to dab now that I have that transfer and work it into the design and kind of mesh those colors together. This is what I love about glaze. I almost feel like instead of just using a color wash, the glaze is actually adding almost like another layer because, because of the working medium it is, it just allows it to have a little bit more of a denser configuration. Whereas when I just use the paint washes, which I do love as well, I find that there's a little bit more of a smoked out effect because you're only using water as the medium, whereas the glaze kind of just enhances it a little bit more. With the custom glaze mix I made with the primer red, I'm going to do the exact same application. I'm going to apply it to my damp rag and place it um, just into sections and just mute everything in together and uh, play with it a little bit. So this way, if I want to add some, take it away, I have full control. And at any point, I can always go back and add in a little bit of the um, original chalk paint mix of the French linen and Enfleur that I did. So I'm really at this point of the uh, project is I'm just doing layers. And these are the techniques that I am using. Again, just adding in a little bit more of um, the blended, the transfer, going to go ahead and add the country gray. Then I'm gonna use that primer red. And again, have fun with this technique and play with it. You can use any chalk paint product you liked and any color tones that you like. Mm -hmm. 
super pleased with how this is all coming together and I'd still like to add a bit more dimension and I want to show you some tips and tricks with wax. I just wanted to quickly show you that I have done the sides and I used the leftover of the IOD transfer so I've done the exact same technique on the front to the sides and that top second coat of the gel stain is almost completely dry. I will use that uh, urethane sealer in the spray to seal that top coat for the wood. And for your chalk paint projects, you can use a lacquer, but for this one, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use clear wax. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with using the dark wax because some people I do know are not all that comfortable with the dark waxes. And just to really help you out, I'm gonna show you something you can do. So with a lint-free cloth, you're going to seal your chalk paint project first just with clear wax. You don't need very much, you just need to rub it in there, get it all over, and make sure to wipe back any extra so it doesn't have a stick to it. Quick FYI, if you're ever using IOD transfers, always remember that you apply them then the clear wax, never the other way around. So using a really dark wax, it's always sometimes um, nice if you actually just use a teaspoon of clear wax and a teaspoon of dark wax and mix them together. This is gonna help the um, application of not only putting it on, but taking it off to be much more simplified. I also find that it's a lot easier to apply and remove it when I've mixed the two together. This just makes it more versatile to play with and remove. If you make your own mix with the clear and dark, you can do this with the black wax as well. I always find it handy to use leftover containers with lids so I can come back and use it anytime. It's always handy with the decorative waxes, white, black, and dark to have little wax brushes. It's just a lot easier to apply. All I would like to do is create a little bit more dimension and some shadowing, both light and dark. I find it very helpful to offload when I apply a, the dark waxes and even white wax, which I'm actually going to be using for this project as well. So again, just grab a little tiny bit of that clear wax and you can wipe back any of the dark wax or even just mellow it out a little bit. As I mentioned, I just wanted to add a few highlights um, all around this piece with some white wax as well. So I just wanted to show you a quick demo of how I just like to add in that highlight just right directly next to the low lights. And again, it's just fun to play with them. You need the clear wax to seal your chalk paint projects, but the decorative light and dark waxes, those are options if you choose. They're very impactful and they're fun to use. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope I've been able to send some inspiration your way. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below, as well as don't forget to subscribe and share this video. I look forward to seeing you again next Saturday for another chalk paint decorative tutorial and we're going to see you soon. Take care.